Hello and welcome. Now this is one of my pet topics. Not that I like to be stressed, but I love teaching about how to de-stress. And what I'm going to talk about today is the difference between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic response inside the body and what that means for me and for you in terms of health. So we have a part of our nervous system called the Autonomic Nervous System or ANS and it splits into two branches and one is called the Sympathetic Nervous System and the other part is called the Parasympathetic Nervous System and these two parts work together as a team it's not like one is bad and one is good they work together as a team and we need both parts but they have different jobs and it's important to understand how they work so the sympathetic nervous system is more relating to or very much relating to safety safety and survival so our body as an organism needs to stay alive and um, stay safe so it's about literally staying alive and so we have this sort of built-in software to to notice if if there's any threats coming to us from the outside and of course this is part of our very old uh, part of our system um, relates very much to the reptilian brain uh, the brain stem which is our survival mechanism. And so the sympathetic nervous system, SNS, and I like to call it SOS, because it will switch on if we're either under a real threat or a perceived threat. And it's really important to understand that if the body feels it's under a perceived threat, it will go into the same response as if it was under a real threat. And the thing about safety is that it's about physical safety, but also emotional safety. And most people don't realize this, this emotional safety aspect, and they don't realize how important it is as far as our body is concerned. So we also can, we know it as the stress response or the fight flight response. Um, and it puts our body under strain. So as far as correlating this with illness, the bottom line is, is that if we are ill, our body is most likely is going to be in this state. The sympathetic nervous system response is going to be switched on. And according to Harvard University, at least 80% of illness is stress related. And in my personal experience of having gone through what I needed to do to recover from chronic illness and having worked with hundreds of people, I've noticed the same thing again and again and again. And that same thing is that if people are chronically ill, then they are stuck in this stress response. And the body, what, what happens is from a health perspective is that you know, and, the, and, and correlating this with symptoms is that um, is that every system in our body, and we have like the endocrine system, the reproductive system, the nervous system, the cardiovascular system, etc. We have these different systems. They they work differently according to whether they are in the sympathetic response or whether our body's in the parasympathetic response. These systems will be working differently. So. When we're stuck in the sympathetic response, when that switch, if you like, is flicked on, our body then thinks we're under threat, and as I said, it may be a real threat, like for example, noticing all of a sudden that your house is on fire, and that you have to get out of the house like now, or it may be a perceived threat. Either way, the body goes into the same response, and it does that so that it can deal with the threat, right? So for example, say you notice your house is on fire and you have to get out straight away, you're going to need more blood pumping to the limbs to, to move your body. You're going to have more, need more um, acuity in your nervous system. Uh, the body's going to say, well, I don't need to digest my food in order to run away from this fire, so I'm going to switch that system off. And I don't need to reproduce while I'm running away from this fire, so I'll, I'll switch that system off. So all the systems in the body change how they work. And 
that is fine that that is fine as a short-term mechanism because we need that to happen so that we can deal with the emergency but we are not designed to live in that state it's a huge strain on stress on the body to be living in a perpetual state of stress and yet the interesting thing is this is what most people are doing and what is even more interesting is they don't even realize they're doing it right they're so used to it that it has become normal and so in the words of one of my teachers uh, what is normal has become abnormal and what is abnormal has become normal so we have to learn to retrain our body out of this stress response and what I discovered for myself was that normally without realizing it this stress response is set up very early on in life and it is set up usually by the age of seven eight nine ten as a result of what is going on in our environment because remember our body is feeding back to us all the time what is going on in my environment do I feel physically and emotionally safe and if we don't then um, then our body will go into the stress mode and there's a particular part of the brainstem that gets activated called the reticular activation system or the RAS and it says hey there's a threat need to turn on the, the stress response and for children as we're growing up this correlates very much to our digestive system our GI tract because our GI tract our digestive system is is directly related um, to a brain re a brain relay uh, in the brain to the brain stem so the digestive tract relates directly with the brain stem because our digestive tract is about ultimate basic survival so if you imagine for example that you are a worm and a worm is a very simple organism and it has a digestive tract which starts at its mouth and goes through the body one long tube to the anus and, and we have the same thing by the way just a little bit more detail in there but that is our digestive tract and our digestive tract along with our reproductive system are responsible for keeping us alive and reproducing the species okay so we're getting back to real fundamentals here of, of, of staying alive and so our brainstem relates directly with this digestive tract and this is why when we're younger that when we're under stress as a child it will often be the digestive tract that is affected so that's obviously just a bit of a side issue for what I'm talking about right now but uh, back to, to, to what I'm talking about here is that we can either be in this stress response which is a huge strain on the body or we can be in the parasympathetic response which means we are we are at peace and we are relaxed and this is the place where our body regenerates in order for the body's self-healing mechanisms to switch on and to operate we need to be this is the place where it happens it happens in the parasympathetic response and normally in general during the day we'll be more over here daytime you know we're, we're active and the, and the sympathetic response is going to be more stimulated but it doesn't have to be stimulated in a threat way it's just that it's more on and then at night that's when our body rests and repairs and we know that that's why we need to sleep so our body can rest and repair and our parasympathetic um, response switches on but this can also these systems can also operate during the day uh, to, to a level and what is important is that we need to train ourselves to be more in this state overall if we are chronically ill and have chronic symptoms it is a sign that we're stuck in the stress response and a sign that we need to cultivate bringing ourselves back into the parasympathetic response and that is done in a multitude of ways I'm not going to go into that <laughs> that would, that's a whole series in itself so obviously I'm not going to talk about that in this video it's just to know that we must learn how to bring ourselves back into a calm relaxed natural state which means our mind is calm 
and our body is relaxed and that is our natural state. So this is a very important piece of information for, for most people to learn. Uh, learning how to de-stress is, is a vital part of recovering our health if we've lost it and once we've recovered it for preventing further illness and for optimizing our health further. So I look forward to speaking with you again in the next video.